Hello I'm Karen and in today's video I'm going to be crocheting you a granny square using an 8mm crochet hook and I'm using double knitting yarn, this is my sparkle yarn and the reason why I'm crocheting this granny square for you is because the title said it's the, the granny square and the clock and I want to show you something um, because at the end of the day I'll be honest I'm a little bit fed up okay um, because Somebody else has used something of mine again, <laughs> and I just, I need to clarify something, okay? So we're going to do this um, experiment to show you. So we're going to begin with a chain of five, so that's one, two, three, four, five. And then we're going to be slip stitching to join or using the single crochet here in the UK to join. And then what we need to do is make another chain of five. So that's one, two, three, four, five. I'm sorry, I've got a little tickle. <laughs> and now we're going to be using the double crochet if you're in the US or the treble crochet if you're in the UK. And we're going to be making it three into the um, chain of five loop. So that's one. Two, oops, three, and then we need to make a chain of two, so that's one, two, and then we need to make another set of three, one, two, and three, a chain of two, one, two, another set of three, one, two, and three, make a chain of two for the corner, and then we're going to make two um, double crochets or triple crochets that's oops one two and we're going to use the chain as our third stitch so what we need to do is we need to count into the third chain so that's one two three we're going to slip stitch or single crochet underneath two strands to be able to join those three together so we've got our first square um, our center square okay we will pull the middle tight in a little while um, and so now we're going to use the single crochet or slip stitch into the next chain okay and oops I've lost my tension there and you then do a chain of five so it's one two three four five and now we need to work three of the stitches into this corner. One, two, and three. Just get myself some more yarn. And then we're going to work into the next corner and we're going to do a set of three. This is one, oops, two, and three, and then make a chain of two, one, two, and then another set of three in this corner. I know this is all really loose and, whoops, <laughs> do that again. I know this is all really loose and lacy looking. But there's a whole, there is a point to all of this. So it's one, two, and three. Okay, and then we're going to move over to the next corner and create another set of three, a chain of two, and another set of three. So that's one. Whoops, a daisy. 
two and three chain two one two get myself some more yarn and complete this um, corner by doing the next set of three she says <laughs> that's one two and three So that's that corner done, we're moving over to the next corner, and same again, that's one, two, and three, chain two, and we're doing an, another set of three, so that's one, two and three and now we need to move into the very last corner which was actually the first corner we began with where we did this chain of five and we're going to make two stitches of the double crochet or the treble crochet and then we're going to use the chain as the third stitch so what we're going to do is we're going to count up three, so that's one, two, three, slip stitching underneath two strands or um, single crocheting to join. And then we're going to slip stitch or single crochet into the next chain. And we're going to begin, this is going to be the last um, round of doing the double crochets. So we need to do a chain of five, so it's one, two, three, four, five. And then work our three double crochet or our three treble crochet in the corner. So that's one, two, and three. And then we're going to work into this section here in between two of the fans that we've created. And we're going to create three in there. One. two, three, I'm going to pull some more yarn <clears throat> and then work into the next corner, we need to make three, a chain of two and three, so that's one, two, three, one, two, and then we want the three. I've lost my tension. So that's one, two, and three. I know this it looks kind of messy, I suppose, in one sense, but in the other sense, it's it's actually quite pretty. And into the in middle one here, we need to make another three. So that's one, two, and three. Then we're going to go to the corner. The reason why I'm sharing all of this is because um, I did actually release a couple of videos the other week about a code that I'd found and how it was all working because I wanted to demonstrate to you what the whole point of the code was and how it was all to do um, with discovering the origins of crochet because at the end of the day that was my mission when I um, decided that I wanted to crochet on um, YouTube I wanted to find the origins of crochet because nobody had done it and when I found a code I wasn't sure whether I'd really found it or whether maybe I'd even invented it because of having a vivid imagination. But as time went by, 
and I found more and more things, I realised that I had discovered something and I discovered something really special and, and it, whether it's important now, whether it's going to be important one day in the future, I don't know. But at the end of the day, I'm not having somebody else pinch my work and not understand what it's all about. And so I want to explain what it's all about. And I know when I published a couple, my other videos, I lost a couple of subscribers. Um, I don't know whether it was because of that or whether it actually was because YouTube was doing one of their tidy up things, which um, they notified me of afterwards, saying that, um people that had not you know that had, uh, weren't using their accounts anymore or had closed their accounts down they was making alterations to my subscribers um <clears throat> other people may say it's some kind of conspiracy <laughs> um against them or whatever but at the end of the day i've got to the stage where i want to be heard i want somebody to actually listen to me and to see Yes, I know this sounds really weird and I know it's out of the box scenario, but it's there and I can't help it. It's like I can't, I've tried and tried and tried to prove to myself that it's actually not real, that it's not there. But then we're just going to finish now, so I'm going to do two stitches at this bit. But the more work I do on it, the more I discover that I'm more accurate than I even thought that I was. So um, well now we need to go into... The third chain up, so that's one, two, three, underneath the two strands to slip stitch to join to finish that round. So you'll have a square that looks kind of like that. I know mine's a bit messy where I've pulled a snag there, but at the end of the day, I can't help that on a video. I'm not going to keep stopping and starting. And now to go, not all going to do is in these chains that we've got here, we're now going to work. Um, it's the single crochet if you're in the US or it's the double crochet if you're in the UK. I'm going to work all the way around. So I've just done that one there, which um, makes you to the, to the corner. And if I count, I'll show you, we need to go underneath two strands. So what I'm going to do is I'm working down this side now. So that was stitch number one. And then this is going to be number two. Three. four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, and 11 I'm going to go into the next this is going to start down the next side now so into the next chain it's a bit tight that one so that's one and then into the loop underneath the two loops of the double or treble crochets that's two three four five six seven eight nine ten and this is into the chain area again so it's eleven so you can see we've got eleven stitches um, on each side and this is really, really significant. <laughs> um, and so is the fact that I'm using an eight millimeter crochet hook, okay? Because um, it's when I was actually doing my research earlier on, I actually said to you that I believed that I could actually read some of the Voynich manuscript and I thought that it was um, a crochet book. And inside there, they've got lots and lots and lots of number eights as part of the actual sequences um, of the patterns and symbols inside there. And then as I carried on and, um, pardon me, and I found this code, the code also contains 
this number eight over and over and over and over again and um, I know some of you may laugh at me and you may not mock me or whatever I just I'm really really not bothered anymore because um, I know that I can see what I can see and the only way that I can show you is to write it down because it's handwritten code it's not something that's done on the computer um, and I haven't got the technology to make all these fancy um, videos and do PowerPoint things and whatnot. I haven't, I haven't got that technology in my brain, but what I can do is use my brain and I can use my writing skills to be able to show you and share with you what I've actually discovered. So we're just coming up to the very end now where, where we actually began. And so here, this was actually the slip stitch where we actually... Um, joined the last round so we just put another <clears throat> single crochet in there and then I'm actually going to into that next stitch there which was a single crochet I'm just going to slip stitch or single crochet to join Ooh. okay so there I'm just going to pull the middle bit tight okay so now you can see we created a square with an eight millimeter crochet hook and double knit yarn Okay, now what I'm going to do as part of this experiment to be able to show you what I'm on about of how things have happened to which you think it's all a little bit strange. I'm going to make you a chain of 12, okay? So that's one, two, three, four, five, six, Seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, and twelve. And cut that off. And if I have this chain of twelve and I hold the ends to stop it from pulling tight, and I put it over this um, square, you can see that it actually measures the same as the square. But if I stretch it, it becomes bigger. Now, if I actually pull this as tight as it will go, so it won't, there's no more give on it, so it would be that chain, then you can see that it measures the same knot to knot as the um, square. And just to show you, <laughs> I've got my tape measure. So if I've got my tape measure on it, you can see that it's a five inch square. Okay, both ways round, because it's a square. Oops, a daisy. Yeah, it's a five inch square. And so if I get my chain of 12, which I've pulled, so I've got this knot to this knot, and so if I've got one knot to the end and the other knot to the other end, then it is, it's pulled to its tightest bit, it is the same. It is, it's the five inches. If I put it that way around, you can see it. So if I cut off the ends like that and then undo this chain because it's the only way I can show you how it's all working. Undo that. And then we measure this strand that we've now got so I've put it on that end there of my tape measure and well my tape measure's gone off the screen so you probably that's not probably the best idea. Whoops it easy. I know what I'll do is I will I'll hold it like that so you can see that end is right on the end there and then we'll hold it so that we can go along and we can see that I'm keeping my tension as I go along. So that you can see that when you get to the very end, you can see that there, you want to see that? It measures 41 centimetres long. And you can try this yourself to see because I've tried it and tried it and tried it. Okay, so how does this, oh hang on, there's one more little thing that I need to do. We need to get another piece of yarn, wrap it around the hook, Let's put that out of the way in a minute. This is the fiddly bit. 
so I'm going to wrap that around to get that so it's the same circumference as my hook because it's really hard to do it with a tape measure and then cut that off get my tape measure back and show you that when you measure that um, that piece of that strand it is an inch long okay so the circumference of this is an inch the chain um, the chain that I undid was 41 centimeters so I'm going to just write that down so we've got an eight millimeter hook its circumference is one inch and my length of my yarn that I measured was 41 centimeters and my square is five inches okay so they're, they're my measurements that I've got from doing this with an eight millimeter crochet hook <clears throat> so if I wanted to make a, gra a granny square blanket and I was thinking about the time and the clock okay so um, if I was going to make a granny square blanket obviously it would be a square if I did 12 pieces by 12 pieces it would equal 144 squares now my measurement because I know that it's a 5 inch square and times in it by 12 would be 60 by 60 and 60 times 60 is 3600 okay I hope you can see this properly because I look like my pen's running out I've got a different pen in a blue pen can you see the blue pen okay so if you've got your circle of your clock or you've got your circle a circle is a full circle is 360 degrees yeah if you're half that that's 1800 so a half circle is 180 degrees and a quarter of this circle, so half that again, I get 900, is 90 degrees. So my granny square measures the same measurements as a circle. So then I put these measurements um, into the clock. So I'm going to do, um, I'm going to have Roman numerals around the outside. So that's number 12, that's number 3, that's number 6, that's number 9. I've got one, two, I've got number four there, number five, I've got number seven, I've got number eight, number ten, and number eleven. And so if I did the measurements of my uh, my twelve pieces, so it's working around in the five times table, so it's five, ten, fifteen, twenty, twenty-five, thirty. 35, 40, 45, 50, 55 and 60. So the measurements of the actual granny square is the same as doing a full circle and is the same as time. Okay, so now I've explained all of that to you, this is where it becomes fascinating. <laughs> Um, so what I did is because I'm part of my research, because these numbers here, these are Arabic numbers, they're numbers that was actually created around about 900 AD and they're Arabic numbers which actually evolved from hieroglyphics. These round here are Roman numerals, they was created in 700 BCE, but they also were descendants from the hieroglyphics. So I was looking at the measurements because when you actually see this symbol or this set of symbols, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, um, when you see this set, that there is, in, it's inside a box and that's supposed to be the royal cubit which is supposed to be the measurements of how they actually measured things, of actually being able to measure their blocks to be able to build everything in, in Egypt. When I looked at this and I thought, if this is to represent my hook, and it's actually five, because there's one, two, three, four, there's five things there, so we've got a five, yeah? This is the half circle there, which was 180 degrees, but it's half of a day, so that's equals 12. 
there's actually 12 lines on this thing here on that symbol and there's actually 11 peaks so I'm just going to put the 11 there and then you've got this um, which is supposed to be the hand like this with the, with the arm which is supposed to be how they measured from fingertip to the elbow and it was only this one which is supposed to be how they were doing their measurements but if you measure somebody that's 60 inches tall which I am my measurement from my inside of my elbow to the end of my thumb if I put my hand like that and I'm measuring a straight line from there to there is 12 inches so I put a 12 there and so if I add up these numbers so I've got 12 24 36 I get my 41 if I do my 5 times 12 I get my 60 and if I do 12 times 12 I get my 144 so that means that my granny square crocheted with an 8 millimeter crochet hook has got exactly the same measurements as the royal cubit in ancient Egypt and the same measurements as time and the same measurements as a circle and I do believe this is all significant because when I said in my other videos that I've actually discovered a code if I look at this set of numbers and this um, the Roman numerals and I work them out in the code I actually can spell a name and I would like to share that with you and I know that you all think I'm probably, I don't know you all think I'm bonkers, but maybe you do think I am, maybe you don't. I don't, I don't know. But at the end of the day, I know that I've seen somebody else on YouTube use my, um, my code. And I'm not having it. I'm not having that somebody else is going to take the glory for this one because it is my discovery. Or it, if somebody might say, oh, well, it's your imagination, your invention or whatever. But I believe I've discovered something and, um... I just want to prove it. I just want to prove a point at the end of the day. And if you can just put up with me proving my point, just while I just do a couple of videos, because I want to republish the other videos that I've already did, did so that you can see the codes that I'm on about. And if you're going to unsubscribe from me for actually speaking my mind while I'm trying to discover the origins of crochet, then so be it. You know, at the end of the day, I want to prove a point because I believe I've always believed that crochet is royal and I've always believed there's, there's some kind of significant something special about it and and all of this is all pointing to do with time and the clock and going back in ancient times where they say that they couldn't do things and I believe that they could so I'm sorry if you think I'm mad but I'm, but I'm not sorry at the end of the day so um so yeah so there you go if nothing else, at least you've learned is how to make a granny square. And you can actually see that if you make it with an 8mm crochet hook, you do get these measurements. I've proved it. So thank you for watching. Thank you for liking. Thank you for sharing. Bye for now.